welcome to the session on lighting for videography. Good lighting can transform a routine, uninteresting shot into an attractive, appealing image that draws the audience attention. Lighting allows the camera to record a quality image and is usually needed to increase or reduce depth of field. However, lighting is also a great manipulator of the audience. The eye is drawn to the brightest portion of the image. That means that the audience can be subtly directed where to look and what subject is the most important. Lighting is also used to add depth to a scene and allows the director to color a scene to create a mood and time period. As long as there is light of some kind around, we will get pictures of a sort. But unless this light is from an appropriate direction to suit subject and camera viewpoint and of suitable quality and brightness, the result is liable to be quite unpredictable. Lighting can emphasize important details or hide them. It can flatter a subject by bringing out positive attributes and it can de-emphasize or hide less attractive attributes. Lighting can even impart a sinister and hostile look. Light sources. Light always starts on its journey from a light source. Light sources can be usually classified into three types, direct or point like, diffuse and ambient. Each type of light source gives picture specific characteristics. The fabled good light largely means a balanced mixture of the three. Direct or point like. Direct light is emitted by a small bright and point like source and shines directly onto the subject. Some important point like sources are the sun, a flash gun and some forms of interior lighting. Direct light causes sharply defined deep shadows and flattens out three dimensional detail. A cylinder bath in a direct light will look like very similar to a box next to it. The line dividing light and dark is sharp and there is little or no gradation from fully lit to fully shadowed. Multiple points like sources cast multiple shadows and result in multiple zones of varying darkness. Diffuse. Diffuse light emanates from a large light emitting or light reflecting surface. It causes soft shadows and an even gradation from light to dark emphasizing three dimensionality and shape. A cylinder in diffuse light look, looks clearly cylindrical with the fully shadowed areas completely black, the side directly facing the light source completely white and in between areas shaded of gray. The size and softness of the shadows depend on the size and distance of the light source. A diffuse light source that is very far away turns into a point like light source. Ambient. Ambient light is usually something of a theoretical concept, the sum of all the light that gets reflected around the scene. For example, there is always some light in the shadows even on the clearest day due to reflection from surrounding objects. Ambient light casts no shadows, instead it fills them in. A cylinder illuminated purely by ambient light, you would have to place it inside a milky white sphere lit evenly from the outside, would appear completely featureless and flat and so would be a cube. Hard and soft light. A light source can be identified as being hard or soft depending on the type of shadow it produces. A hard source, for example direct sunlight, produces a hard edge shadow, reveals texture and is usually a point source or of a small area. Hard light that is transmitted directly from a small point source results in relatively coherent or parallel rays. This gives the light a hard, crisp, sharply defined appearance. The light from a clear, unfrosted light bulb, a focused spotlight or the noonday sun in a clear sky all represent hard light sources. Hard light casts a sharp, clearly defined shadow. Soft light produces overlapping shadows with soft edges. It tends to obliterate texture and because it needs a large originating area to be soft, it is difficult to control. One way of producing soft light is to reflect or bounce a hard source like the sun off a reflector. 
three point lighting for most situations the best lighting results come from using some variation of the three basic light directions the three point lighting technique is a standard method used in visual media such as video film still photography and computer generated imagery it's a simple but uh, versatile system which forms the basis of most lighting once you understand three point lighting you are well on the way to understanding all lighting the technique uses three lights called the key light fill light and backlight naturally you will need three lights to utilize the technique fully but the principles are still important even if you only use one or two lights as a rule if you only have one light it becomes the key if you have two lights one is the key and the other is either the fill or the backlight key light this is the main light it is usually the strongest and has the most influence on the look of the scene it is placed to one side of the camera or subject so that this side is well lit and the other side has some shadow fill light this is a secondary light and is placed on the opposite side of the key light it is used to fill the shadows created by the key the fill will usually be softer and uh, less bright than the key to achieve this you could move the light further away or use some spun you might also want to set the fill light to more of a flood than the key backlight the backlight is placed behind the subject and uh, lights it from the rear rather than providing direct lighting like the key and fill its purpose is to provide definition and subtle highlights around the subject's outlines this helps separate the subject from the background and provide a three dimensional look four point lighting if you have a fourth light you could use it to light the background of the entire scene a typical four point lighting setup is given in the diagram the addition of a fourth light the background light makes for a four point lighting setup the background light is placed behind the subject on a high grid or low to the ground unlike the other three lights which illuminate foreground elements like actors and props it illuminates background elements such as walls or outdoor scenery this technique can be used to eliminate shadows cast by foreground elements onto the background or to draw more attention to the background it also helps to set off the single eye nature of the camera this means that it helps the camera give depth to the subject lighting contrast the contrast in a scene is simply the difference between the brightness of its lightest and darkest tones if the range is too great for the camera to handle as is the case when strong sunlight casts deep shadows the extreme tones are lost in the image the tonal contrast that the camera sees will depend partly on the tones of the subjects partly on variations in the light's intensity and partly on the shadows the light casts excessive lighting contrast produces burned out highlights and uh, detail less lower tones whether the result looks highly dramatic or difficult to interpret depends on the situation when the lighting is high contrast lots of uh, hard light from one direction and no fill light picture quality can alter considerably as the camera's position varies if you shoot with the light behind the camera subjects may look bright flat and unmodeled if you shoot towards the light only the edges of subjects will be illuminated while the rest remains unlit using reflectors and diffusers in videography a reflector is an imp improvised or specialized reflective surface used to redirect light towards a given subject or scene the easiest and least expensive way to improve a subject's lighting when shooting in sunlight is to use a reflector this is simply a surface such as a board screen cloth or even the wall that reflects existing light onto the subject from another angle the quality of the reflected light depends on the surface you use if the reflector has a matte white surface it will produce a soft diffused light which spreads over a wide angle but this soft reflected light is much weaker and will only travel a relatively short distance 
depending on the intensity and distance of the original light source. Reflectors can be easily made from a board covered with aluminum foil, smooth or crumpled and flattened or matte white painted according to the type of light reflection required. A board with a different surface on each side can be useful. These boards can be made of wood, foam core which is extremely lightweight or cardboard. The bigger the reflector, the more light that will be reflected over a broad area. Even a large cloth can be used. However, cloth reflectors of this size can be cumbersome to hang and are likely to blow in the wind. A diffuser is a large piece of a translucent material that you place between the light and the subject to spread the light and make it softer. The size of the diffuser depends on your subject. Of course, diffusers include soft boxes and uh, screens as well. Using filter. In videography, a filter is a camera accessory consisting of uh, an optical filter that can be inserted into the optical path. The filter can be of a square or oblong shape and mounted in a holder accessory or more commonly a glass or plastic disc in a metal or plastic ring frame which can be screwed into the front of or clipped onto the camera lens. Filters modify the images recorded. Sometimes they are used to make only subtle changes to image, images. Other times the image would simply not be possible without them. In monochrome photography, colored filters affect the relative brightness of uh, different colors. Red lipstick may be rendered as anything from almost white to almost black with different filters. Others change the color balance of images so that photographs under incandescent lighting show colors as they are perceived rather than with a reddish tint. There are filters that distort the image in a desired way, diffusing an otherwise sharp image, adding a starry effect, etc. Linear and circular polarizing filters reduce oblique reflections from non-metallic surfaces. Many filters absorb part of the light available necessitating longer exposure. Accessories As with everything in the video world, lights come with a variety of accessories. Here are some accessories that you will definitely want to include in your kit. Accessory mounts If you find yourself in situations where you need to get your lights into places where you can't use a normal light stand, you will need a variety of accessory mounts. Look for mounts such as uh, C-clamps, scissor clamps, especially for uh, drop ceilings and uh, flexible arms for uh, maneuvering your reflectors and flags and door hangers. Bandos. Bandos are uh, the adjustable flaps in front of a light that give you the ability to block or shape the light beam and spill. Carrying case. It's no fun having all the toys if you can't bring them with you. So a good case is a must. Keep in mind that you will be carrying these kits, so make sure they aren't so heavy that you have to rent some elephants to move them. Gels Most light kits have a supply of gels. These gels help control the intensity of light. ND filters, for example, change indoor light into outdoor, color temperature blue, CTB gels, and change outdoor window light into indoor light color temperature orange CTO gels. The kits may also include gel frames to mount the gels on the lights. Scrims. A scrim is a metal mesh screen that you place over the light to decrease its intensity. Scrims come in full, half and a variety of densities. You might use a half scrim to change the intensity of only half of the light for example. Soft boxes. These large diffusion boxes fit on the front of the reflector spots and uh, front cells to turn them into soft lights. Adjustable. Most reflector spots and uh, front cells have an adjustable bulb so that you can move it from the flood to spot position. This gives you greater flexibility in the type and intensity of your key light. Stands and stand height. It is important to know what type of video you normally shoot. If you do a lot of work where your talent is standing, you will need a light stand that has a greater height than for uh, seated interviews. Professionals often choose to position the key light at an angle of about 45 degrees above the talent. 
that is pretty high and requires a stand that raises to at least 8 feet. Umbrellas. The umbrella is a great tool for changing a bright key light into a large soft fill light. Outdoor and indoor lighting. Outdoor lighting is something that can always change. The sun is always moving, there are clouds, possibly rain. All of these things will affect your camera settings. To properly shoot outside, you will need to arm yourself with reflectors and diffusion panels. Anyway, properly lighting outside does not have to be a total pain as you will find out here. Always know where the sun is. The instinct is to use the sun as your key light, which you should not fight at all despite the fact that uh, the sun will likely get in your subject's eyes. To reduce the amount of light going into said eyes, place a diffusion panel between the sun and your subject's face. You can use reflectors or uh, bounce boards to create backlighting by bouncing the direct light off of their surfaces and onto back of the subject. You can also use them to balance the shadows on your talent's face. The basic reflector types you can buy come in gold, silver or white. Use the white reflector when you want to create a more natural light. Gold and silver create a more intense look with the corresponding tint. This allows you to add some color temperature if you think it is needed. Lighting techniques to create mood. Lighting does not always have to be perfectly balanced with a complete range of tones. Like color, different styles of lighting can produce different moods. And uh, two of the most extreme examples of this can be found in high key images and uh, low key images. Lighting sets the mood of a shot and therefore consideration should be given to the lighting style and if it matches the aims of the program. For example, news coverage is an attempt to report events objectively because of expediency news pictures are often lit by existing light or flooded with a battery lamp to get an exposure. There is neither time nor the facilities to achieve the style of the controlled portrait lighting which is the normal in a studio set. News pictures achieve a feeling of uh, objectivity because of this apparent lack of careful control, a lack of technique but this is misleading. News technique is the ability to control and uh, use existing light and deal with the situation at speed which means implementing a number of lighting shortcuts accumulated from experience. A documentary style of lighting is close to this technique but there is the time to have a more considered approach when lighting interviews and locations. Match your lighting style to the content of the program. Develop speed in lighting by mentally plotting positions of the camera and lamps wherever you are. Leave obtrusive lighting styles to pop concerts and entertainment shows. Attempt to make your lighting technique invisible and keep it simple. Let us summarize. This chapter provides you with the basics of lighting for video. This is a rapidly changing field especially with the arrival of cameras which can work on a much wider contrast range so that lighting techniques today are much more inspired by videography. Good lighting can transform a routine uninteresting shot into an attractive appealing image that draws the audience attention. Depending on the light source, the subject will look substantially different. For most situations, the best lighting results come from using some variations of the three basic light directions. Lights come with a variety of accessories and lighting can even produce different moods. Here are some assignments for you. Elucidate basic light sources. Describe the various shading devices used in controlling light during videography. Enumerate the process of a three-point lighting system with the help of a diagram. Now some references. Lighting for Digital Video and Television by John Jackman, published in 2010 by Elsevier. Another Video Production Handbook, Gerald Millerson, Focal Press, London. Then one more Production Handbook, Brooklyn College Department of Film and uh, Basic Video Production Handbook. With that we come to the conclusion of uh, this session. In a new session with a new topic, we will meet again. Till then. Goodbye.